Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Flooding in tray column part 3 Downcomer flooding causes, consequences, and prevention. In this video course, you will learn the downcomer backup flooding and downcomer choke flooding. I would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. We are striving hard to deliver valuable knowledge content for your career progress. So subscribe now before you forget. Downcomer flooding. The trays nearly always fail from lack of liquid handling capacity. The tray deck has three functions to perform. Vapor liquid contact, vapor liquid separation, and to permit the froth to flow over the well to the downcomer. We have discussed in part one and two of the series, the jet flooding, and in that you learned the lack of separation leads to endangerment flooding. Downcomer is an important element connecting one tray to another to facilitate the liquid movement. The froth structure, the fluid dynamic and hydraulic in the downcomer needs thoughtful analysis to appreciate its importance in stable operation of the column. We will now focus on the downcomer related issues. Trays operating at high liquid rates rarely fail from jet flood limitation. Under such downcomer can cause the tray to fail at high liquid loads. The purpose of the downcomer is to disengage the vapor and permit the liquid to flow through to the tray below. Proper sizing of downcomer is critical for stable and efficient operation of the tray column. Typically, the froth entering the downcomer from the tray has a vapor fraction of 0.4. Downcomer area should be sufficient for handling high froth rate and vapor separation and upward movement. A good design provides for the vapor bubbles to rise up in the downcomer and the clear liquid to move with adequate velocity to the tray below without accumulation. As the loading in the downcomer increases, the downcomer can flood, affecting stable column operation. In the part 1 of the tray column flaring, you learned higher wear loading will lead to higher froth level on the tray and in turn to higher froth loading of the downcomer as well as higher pressure drop across the tray. Higher froth flow at increased wear loading to the downcomer and higher differential pressure across the tray makes the downcomer performance critical for the system as a whole. Downcomer flooding can occur by two ways. One, downcomer backup flooding. Two, downcomer choke flooding. First, we will discuss downcomer backup flooding. Before you understand downcomer backup flooding, 
let me ask you a question what is downcomer backup the downcomer backup is a hydrostatic head or the clear liquid required to be maintained in the downcomer to overcome the total tray pressure drop and the resistance in the downcomer clearances and make the liquid to flow from one tray to the tray below. The downcomer backup is expressed in both mm of liquid and as percentage of the tray spacing plus the wear height. The downcomer backup or a clear liquid height is usually limited to 40% of the tray spacing plus the wear height. Thus the liquid backup in the downcomer is attributed to tray hole pressure drop represented by HT, height of liquid froth on the tray represented by HF, friction losses in the downcomer apron H of DC. The total liquid height in the downcomer or the downcomer backup is the sum of these three parameters and is denoted by HDC. So HDC equals HT plus HF plus HFDC. When the liquid flow rate is increased, each of these three parameters also increase. In addition, tray pressure drop also increases when the vapor flow rate is increased, hence the downcomer backup increases. The tray froth height is equal to the sum of the outlet wear height plus the height of liquid over the wear plus half of the hydraulic gradient giving the following expression hf equals hw plus how plus hhg by 2 which is the last the last term hhg by 2 is 0 for a small diameter tray where HOW is a height over the wear, HHG is hydraulic gradient, capital HW is a wear height. Thus the downcomer backup can be written as HDC equals HT plus HW plus HOW plus HHG by 2 plus HFDC. This figure illustrates the downcomer backup in a column operating with normal flow rates. The structure of the float in the downcomer is shown. It has three layers, A, a froth layer, B, aerated layer, C, clear liquid. The total backup is a result of 1 tray pressure drop, 2 friction under the downcomer, 3 tray froth height. This figure illustrates the downcomer backup in flooded condition. Observe the liquid height in the downcomer. It is flooded completely. The froth height on the tray has increased to flooded condition. The downcomer lacks a capacity to handle the increased liquid flow from the tray. This has resulted in the flooding of the downcomer.
what we are seeing now is a sample calculation of a down camera backup. Total tray pressure drop is 100 mm of water column. The head loss under down camera clearance 10 mm of water column. So the down camera backup equals 100 plus 10, 110 mm of water column. Taking into account 20% margin, the total backup works out to 132 mm of water column. This will be the height or the backup in the downcomer. The liquid height at flooding is tray spacing plus outlet wear height. So HADC equals HW plus HTS. The aerated liquid height at flooding is a function of downcomer liquid and fractional volume holdup with the downcomer. HADC equals HDC divided by phi DC, which is a fractional volume holdup. Where HADC the aerated downcomer backup, HW is outlet wear height. HTS is a tray spacing, phi DC is a fractional volumetry holdup in the downcomer. The values of phi DC for gases will vary depending upon the density as well as the foaming tendency. Downcomer flooding can also be caused by fouling or deposition of solid materials that are either formed during the processing or entering along with the feeds. The deposited solids will block the downcomer clearance and restrict the area for flow leading to increase in downcomer backup and flooding. The deposition of solids or fouling is demonstrated in this figure. Look close to the downcomer apron or the downcomer bottom clearance, a solid deposition has occurred shown in blue color. This will restrict the flow for the liquid to move to the tray below. Downcomer choke flooding. Downcomer choking is a phenomena that occurs at very high liquid flow rates. Downcomer choke occurs when the top area of the downcomer is inadequate to handle the high froth rate, preventing effective vapor liquid disengagement. As the liquid flow rate increases, the velocity of the aerated fluid in a downcomer also increases. When the velocity exceeds a certain limit, friction losses in the downcomer and downcomer entrance becomes excessive and a frothy mixer cannot be transported to tray below. The increased resistance will cause the liquid to back up to the tray and eventually flood the column. This is termed downcomer choke. This figure illustrates the structure of the two phase mixer in the downcomer under flooded condition. The downcomer top area is not sufficient for the froth rate. The froth velocity is high, vapor is not getting separated from the liquid.
the down cover must be designed with sufficiently large area so that all the liquid downflow is transported without choking. The key design parameter is the down cover top area where friction losses are the highest. The reason for this is that it is here the fractional gas holdup of the aerated liquid is the maximum. The entire quantity of the gas flowing as a mixer with the liquid over the outer wire is available at this point. Further down the downcomer, the vapor disengages and moves up. The gas holdup of the aerated liquid is reduced as a result and the quantity of liquid flow is greatly decreased. Downcomer flooding consequences and prevention. The downcomer flooding ultimately leads to filling of tray spacing with the liquid and mixed with the already separated liquid on the tray above. The tray efficiency decreases resulting in poor separation performance. Downcomer backup flooding is easier to avoid than downcomer choke flooding. If the vapor rate is within design limit, then by reducing the vapor flow rate and liquid flow rate slightly, the DC backup will decrease and column will return to stable operation. If the problem persists and column operating capacity is limited due to downcomer backup, the solution could be to reduce the head loss in the downcomer clearance. This is done by increasing the downcomer clearance. This figure highlights the downcomer clearance area. Increasing the width of the opening slightly, you can decrease the head loss. Increasing downcomer clearance should be done in such a way that it does not influence the flow pattern on the tray which can in turn affect the tray efficiency. Downcomer choke flooding results from inability of the downcomer entrance area or the mouth to handle the increased flow rate. In certain situations, the culprit for the downcomer choke flooding has been found to be foamy. Foaming increases the froth volume because the gas volume fraction will be appreciably higher. The column loading may have to be reduced considerably till situation returns to normalcy. To prevent downcomer choke due to foaming, anti-foaming agent may be useful provided the product contamination is not an issue. The downcomer entrance or the mouth area has to be made larger to reduce the froth velocity and to facilitate vapor separation and upward movement. This decision must be made in consultation with the experts or the tray specialist. One solution to overcome the downcomer choke flooding is to use sloped downcomer. Sloped downcomer has a wider mouth at the DC entrance with larger area than at the bottom, which facilitates 
the vapor disengagement from the down flowing liquid. The sloped down comer also provides large vapor liquid contact area on the tray. This leads to increase of bubbling area of the tray. This figure illustrates a sloped down comer. Note that the large area at the entrance of the down comer which helps to reduce velocity. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career-oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.